Hey folks, hello and welcome to another WordPress tutorial by the team here at Divi Engine. My name is Roby and today I'll be showing you how to add a folder portfolio triggered by any Divi module. You'll find other great tutorials and resources on our blog at diviengine.com forward slash resources, which will also be linked in the description of this video. Now, following along with text is a little bit more your style, definitely check out the full blog post also linked in this video. Now, before we get started, let's make sure that we've got about 10 minutes available and that we're familiar with the Divi theme and the code module and maybe some JavaScript and CSS will help out here. Now with that all sorted, let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what we're gonna be creating today. Here I've got a filterable portfolio with a bunch of projects that I've already created in the back end of my site. Now, when I click these are actually text elements, you'll see that it doesn't have that normal boring, just text links. I've got these kind of like button-like items. So when I click on filter item two, it quickly filters through them as I click on it. So these are just an example of what you can use. You can use images, blurbs, buttons, whatever your heart desires, you can use as the actual filter trigger. So we're gonna take a look at building something like this. So let's get ready. And um, just so you know that this does assume that you've got some projects already in your Divi install, but we're gonna be covering, just touching on that briefly as we set this up. So let's get going. Okay, so to get it all going, we're gonna go ahead and create the categories that we're filtering by on that filterable portfolio module. So where we need to go for this is we go here to projects and then we click on categories. Now you'll see that I've got three categories in here already, but we'll just add a new one and we'll call it banana because I'm gonna be adding a new banana. Now you can type the slug in, but it'll also automatically generate you one from um, the name that you give it. Now, just this is important because when I add this, we're gonna be using these slugs throughout this tutorial to kind of make sure that the code jQuery and the CSS works perfectly by allowing us to click on those filters. So now you can add any filters you or categories that you would like. These are just basically what will filter that portfolio. Now in the tutorial, the text version, we have filter item one, two, and three on the website. So depending on whether you wanna follow along exactly and keep it simple, you can keep these slugs that we have right here. Otherwise, put in whatever you want and just make sure that you change wherever we reference these other slugs to the ones that match up with your categories. But I'll also talk you through that as we get there. So let's check that out. Okay, so now you can see here that I already have a whole bunch of portfolio projects here in my website. What you're gonna need to do, if you don't have any yet, is you're gonna have to add a bunch of them. I will kind of recommend three to four per category, just because that's the way you can easily see the portfolio working and the way that it will look the best. So just the way that you do that, you'll click on add new, and then you'll give it a title. We'll call it banana, like we did with the other slug. We're not gonna enable the Divi Boulder here. You can give it a description. I'm just gonna type some dummy text. And the other thing that you wanna do, because this project is represented visually on the front end, wanna make sure we select the featured image. Now, I have my bananas right here. I'm gonna go ahead and set that as my featured image. And now here is the other important part. You need to select the category that it's assigned to because this is how it will be filtered on the front end. I'm gonna select banana here because this is our banana category and that'll match up with that slug we had earlier. And I'll hit publish. Now this process, you're gonna to wanna to repeat until you have enough projects here within your Divi install. It's not gonna help if you don't have enough, just make sure that you have a bunch of stuff in here so that it's easier for you to see your new custom folder in action. Okay, so hopefully you didn't break a sweat entering all those projects in there, but we're now about ready to get started building this out and setting it up so that you can use any module you want as the filter trigger for your filterable portfolio module. Now, I'm here on a page that I just created and added to my site. This might be an existing page for you on your website. You could create a new one as I have here, or it might be a post. It doesn't really matter where this goes. It will function the same way. Now, the first thing you wanna do is, if you're adding a new page like me, is give it a name. So I'm just gonna give it filter, uh, Folderable portfolio, or just port works too. 
and I've got my Divi Builder active already. Now we're gonna wanna add a new row and I'll just add a single row, single column row here. And I'll type in filter to find the filterable portfolio. And then it'll come up and you'll see it already has all of our categories in here. So by default, it'll actually just use all the categories, but, but there might be some scenarios where you have different filterable portfolios for different categories of items. It might be staff, it might be projects that you worked on. Um, I'm just for posterity going to select them all here. And then next on the design tab, we wanna make sure that we set the layout to grid. Otherwise we've got full width images and that's just not gonna look that great. Next up, we'll head to advanced. And here we need to put in a CSS class. And the name of that class is Divi Engine Filter. And uh, you'll see why we use that a little bit later when we look at the code, but just put it in there and trust me on this one for now. And then I'll just click that and let's look at the visual view. And here you'll see actually all the filters up here already. You'll see all the different items in our database here, all the different projects. Now we've got these old filters here. We don't want them on there because we won't be using them. We're gonna be re replacing them. So we need to add a little bit of CSS here. We go back into the settings for our filterable portfolio module, click on the advanced tab and then custom CSS. We'll go down here to where it says portfolio filters. And now what we'll do is we'll just type in display none with a little end cap there. And then when we take a look at it now, we'll see that those st stock filters are gone. Good, because they're ugly anyway. We don't want them. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to put those triggers for the filters, right? So let's add a new row. We're gonna go with a four column row because we've got four categories now. I'm gonna see if I can get that banana folder in there for you so that it is nice and easy to understand what we do here when you need to modify the code a little bit. So I'm gonna put four columns and then I'm just gonna add a text module in here. With our text module added, I'll just make the first one banana because this will just be your category name so that the user knows, it. okay, well, if I click on banana, I'm gonna see everything related to the banana category. Now you can design and style this however you like for the purposes of this tutorial, we're not gonna do that right now. Um, the only other important thing is I wanna go to advanced here and you're gonna need to do this for each of these text items each, or whatever trigger you use. It might be a blob, it might be an image, whatever you decide to do. You need to go to the CSS ID. And now for the CSS ID, you need to put that slug that corresponds to the category. Now you'll remember I explicitly made mine banana here. Yeah? Now yours might be different. You might have t-shirts, it might be web design, it might be anything that you have, but it would have been created in that slug step when we created the category. So let's make sure that matches up. If you're following along with the text tutorial, it'll probably be filter-item-1. But we're adding the banana one right here. So we're just gonna say yes for that one. Now we've got banana down here. I'm just gonna drag this up here. It's a little easier and makes a little bit more sense to have it at the top. And now just to keep things easy, I'll duplicate this a few times. I'll drag it over, drag it over. And now in this scenario, it doesn't make sense really to copy them. I could probably start from scratch, but when you're working on a real project, you probably would have already gone and styled the first one and then you copy it over. It just limits uh, the amount of time you spend doing that and saves you a bit of time. Now what you need to do if you did it the way I did, you need to go in and then you say folder item one. And then of course your classes need to match up so, or the, the, the CSS ID. So this will be folder item dash one again. And now when I go to the next one, we're gonna update it to be folder item two. And then again, the spelling here of this is very important because if it's not in there correctly, your code will not work. And then we go to the last one Folder item three. And over here, folder dash item dash three. Cool. 
So we've got that in there. Now, another added thing we need to do is we need to open the row settings because we're telling our jQuery code that it needs to look in a certain row, which is this one, to go ahead and search for any clicks that happen. And then when that click happens, we want to know the ID of the item that we clicked on. And that's why we put those IDs in on those text modules in the previous step. Now, we're going to go ahead to the advanced tab to do so. We're going to click on the CSS ID. And now the ID we enter here is just going to be custom dash grid dash control because this is going to be controlling our custom grid. Now, this name is arbitrary. It's just something that I created in my code to remind me of what exactly it is for. And you'll see it come up in the code when we get to the next steps when we start adding that jQuery and CSS. Okay, so here we go. We're starting to add some code to the site and we'll start with the jQuery. Now, the way that I normally like to do this is I do a separate um, code module for my jQuery and a second one for my CSS, just so that it's separate and there's no, no confusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click here and add a code module. Now, what I also like to do is I like to give it an admin label. So I'll just say jQuery code. And then here, this is where we'll jump back to our actual blog post here for the text version. And we'll just scroll down to where I have my code embedded here. So here's my jQuery code. We're gonna go ahead and copy it. And then I'll go back to my site here. Now you gotta make sure to put it between opening and closing script tags, otherwise you'll get an error. And then you'll just paste it in there. Now let's take a quick look at what's happening here. We've got jQuery document ready function. Let's just make sure that jQuery is ready to run. And now here is that function where it's gonna listen for a click. So it's looking at that custom grid control, that last class that we set up, and it's gonna look for a click on a PB text module. Now, if you use the blurb, it'll be the ET underscore PB blurb module. You'll need to change that based on the type of, of um, module that you use. So just keep that in mind and make sure you do that. Now we're assigning an ID variable here of the variable of the ID of the item that was clicked on so that we can use it here throughout our code. Now we want to make sure that we indicate which uh, folder is active at any given time. So when we look over here, oh, not this one, right over here, you see this black line. So this is just some, J, um, some CSS that I wrote that of, of a class that gets added every time we click on something, just so we know which folder is active at any given time. Now, this first removes it from all the folder items. Now, you need to make sure also that these match up to the different um, categories that you have. We actually need to add another line here for our banana category that we made. So I am gonna copy and paste that, and you would need to do that if you have more than three categories or if they, they differ, you just need to change the text, but I'm gonna change that to banana. And then the rest of the code looks fine. On the next line here, we are adding a class. This is the one that I just showed you with the black line underneath the text module. And that will just indicate which one's active. And then here we simulate a click in the Divi engine folder to be on this specific folder, the ones that we have hidden now. So. This is just basically what pulls it all together that makes the magic happen. But that's your jQuery code. Now you can go and do other things. You can have this thing work on hover. You can do all sorts of crazy things depending on your, your, your knowledge level. But also just looking up some um, jQuery code tutorials will teach you a lot about some of the fun things you can do here. But we're gonna go ahead and click that just to save it for now. And next up, we're gonna be adding the CSS. Okay, so onto the CSS, this is where we're gonna make things look pretty and we can change some of the visual elements like the amount of columns that are displayed within our filterable portfolio. And we're also gonna remove, um, if we pull this up here, we're gonna remove these gaps between these different um, images. Actually, what we're gonna do also, why don't we take the elements here and let's remove the category, let's remove the title, and let's take the pagination off. 
Now we've got a little bit of a tighter display here. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the CSS with another code module. Let's do so. Let's go to code here and let's give it that admin label again, just because it's easier to remember and go to the text. Now we'll jump back to our blog post here on the Divi Engine website. And then what we'll do is we'll copy the code that you find right here, hopping back. Now for the JavaScript or the jQuery, we needed to put things between script tags. Now, because this is CSS, we'll put it between style tags. This is very important. Now, when I paste the code here, you see a lot of stuff that looks pretty familiar. There's that custom grid control that we had earlier. Now, what this does is it just basically means that when you hover over the PB text module, which is the one that we used in this example, again, you need to modify that based on the type of module you use. If it was blurb, that would be blurb, etc. cetera. Um, it just turns it into a, a pointer so that you know that this thing is clickable that you're hovering over. It's, it's semantics, but you know, it's important to let the users know where they can interact with the site. Next up, we've got the Divi Engine filter and the PB grid item, which that's not important to remember, but here we see margin zero. Now let's quickly see on the front end and then I'll actually, I'll keep this open and I'll just open the visual boulder. And you can see here that that CSS has actually gone ahead and bumped up all my images, all my filter items right next to each other. And you'll see that, that it's in four columns here. But I wanted to show you the flexibility that you can utilize here is that, let's say I make this 33%. Now you'll see that we're into a three column um, layout now. So you can play around with it and do different things. For the purpose of this, I think we'll leave it at 25. I think that works good for the amount of information we have on the screen. And then here you see the DE active class. This is the class that you'll modify to change the color of the line um, that indicates the active item, um, the active filter that we have at the moment. But this is basically the only code that you have in here that you need to be aware of. You can change it and it will just modify the way that the, the page looks. So let's go ahead and publish this page and fingers crossed, everything works perfectly. Um, so let's check it out. Let's, let's view the page. Okay, so we've got everything here on the page. You can change this hover stuff. Um, filter two, boom, banana. We got bananas. And look, that was so easy, guys. It, it really is not that hard to get this set up. Now you can add any filters here that you like. You've seen us go step by step here. Um, it's just a really good way for a showcase on your site that the best part of it is it doesn't require a reload of the page to filter through these items. Maybe you can add a clear button so you go back to seeing all the items. Um, I'm not sure, it depends on how you wanna do it, but um, that should give you a pretty good insight. And that was pretty fun and easy to do too. I mean, this does not look great by any means, but you know, it's up to your creativity what modules you wanna use for this. So maybe, you know, you can do a mixture of modules. You can just really do whatever you want but hopefully this gives you um, the groundwork to get going, creating an awesome filterable portfolio using any Divi module of your choice. And sad panda, that's it guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to add a filterable portfolio module that is triggered with any Divi module you like on a page existing or new on your Divi website. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and for sure check out our blog at DiviEngine.com forward slash resources, where you'll find more helpful tutorials just like this one. Also, definitely let us know in the comments if there's any topics that you'd like us to cover or if you have any issues that pop up. That's it from me, Roby with the Divi Engine team. I'll catch you guys in the next video.